Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Some of you have asked the question, Todd, when do I know I need to change out my batteries? Well, the quick answer is when it doesn't work anymore. But let me give you the two minute version of what to look for before it gets to that point. By the way, I've written a blog on this, so if you go down to the description, click on that, a lot more in detail. All right, now typically with a lead acid gel and AGM batteries, there's some telltale signs that we can look for to find out whether our battery is performing well or if it looks like it's been damaged. So let's first start off with the looks, okay? Batteries, there's a chemical exchange that takes place inside. What we're doing is we're pulling the potential energy um, out of the battery through the anode rod to go do work coming back on the cathode rod, okay? That takes time. And if we try and draw too much power too fast or try and charge the battery back up too fast, we're not given time for that chemical exchange to take place. Inside the battery, it will begin to swell out, right? Simply because there's a chemical exchange, we're off gassing way too fast. Well, if the battery swells, you will see it as swelling, then we know that that battery is damaged. It may be working for now, but it's gonna go out pretty soon. You're gonna see very limited lifespan on that battery, and you can rest assured that you're not gonna be able to pull the full potential out of that battery. So a swollen battery, absolutely, when you see a swollen battery, that's a dead battery walking, it's time to replace it. Another option there may be is the battery looks just fine, but let's say it went over a few years or whatnot. You don't know the age of the battery, how many cycles you pulled out of it. So now you're gonna look at voltage. Some may call it an erratic voltage. Typically we'd know it as a voltage drop, okay? So you charge that battery up, there's a certain amount of voltage when you fully charge it. On a lead acid gel and AGM battery, that's roughly around 12.6 to 12.7 volts. Now, if the battery needs to be replaced, you're gonna see a precipitous voltage drop as soon as you put a sufficient load on there. Precipitous, did you catch that? That's a large drop. What do I mean by that? So let's say, you have your battery inside, it's fully charged, you're plugged into shore power. You decide to find out, easy way, to find out how that battery is performing. So what you could do is disconnect shore power. When you disconnect shore power, you've turned off the battery charger, known as the converter. Now you can turn on your 12 volt appliances, whatever you have, and put a decent load on there. Now, let's say you turn on a couple fart fans, about three amps each, you turn those on and maybe you know, hit a slide out or something like that. If the voltage drops precipitously, right? 12.7, bam, 11 something, okay? That's time that that battery needs to be replaced, right? You got this erratic voltage. We call it a voltage drop. So under a, a medium load, say 400 watts, if, that, if the voltage drops more than 1%, then we know that the battery, it's time to replace it. If it's more than 3%, you need to replace it immediately. So that's kind of what you're looking for is that erratic voltage behavior or voltage drop. Even if you turn on the fans, if you're starting off at 12.6, you should be looking for maybe 12.5, possibly 12.3. But if it drops below 12, in other words, you, you lose 0.5 volts or more, it's time. It's time to replace those batteries. Secondly, as well, if it doesn't last as long as it did before. Now, all batteries operate this way, except for lithium batteries. In other words, the maximum potential you can get out of that battery, it'll never be more than the first three or four times that you discharge that battery. Every single time you discharge that lead acid gel or AGM batteries, you lose a little bit of your depth of charge in there. So in other words, you lose the potential coming up. If it's 100 amp hours, you can only use 50% of that, say, on a lead-acid battery, you get 50 amp hours. Well, you do that after a few times, that's what you'll get is just a 50. But what happens is you'll never have the fullest potential you did the first couple times. So let me tell you what a cycle is. Here, I'm using the word cycle when it comes to batteries. All right. So from the manufacturers, a cycle is as such. Here I have a battery. It's fully charged. I can't put any more electricity inside that battery. It's fully charged. To the manufacturer, they will say a cycle is roughly about 50% discharged on a lead acid gel or AGM battery, somewhere around there, and then fully charged back up. So you deplete it by 50%, charge it back up. That's one cycle, okay? So your lead acid gel and AGM batteries between 50, maybe 60, 
65%, they will consider that a cycle. How many do you get with a lead acid battery? Maybe 300. You know, you get over to gel, maybe 500, maybe 600, depending on what they put on there, but I'm telling you, it's limited, okay? Now with lithium, the cycle one, we can, we can discharge far deeper. We could discharge these about 90%. 50% with your lead acid gel and AGM batteries, 90%, you could discharge it. Now, that cycle, discharge it 90%, charge it all the way back up. That's one, one cycle. And with lithium batteries, depending on the manufacturer, somewhere between 5,000 to 10,000 cycles. Lead acid gel and AGM, 300 to maybe 600 cycles. The question is, is, okay, Todd, well, you said you could discharge these lithium batteries to 90%. You could discharge those more. The internal BMS would protect it. But here's the thing. Inside your RV, everything that you touch pretty much runs off of 12 volts. If you completely discharge your battery, you got no brain. So even if you go over there, let's say, to start your generator, it takes a battery to start your generator to charge up your batteries again. Hmm, the irony. Well, you need battery power in order to start the generator. So what we do is we typically say, discharge it no more than 90%. Save that 10%, so that way in an emergency, you could still operate your 12 volt appliances. Get some charge back into it, and let the battery take back over. So that's why we say 90% on those lithium batteries. But now that we know what a cycle is, let's get into the other details. We're using the battery up, it's only got so many cycles. By the time we get over here to 300, maybe 500 cycles, if you do really well at cleaning your batteries off and maintaining the water inside, distilled water, say for your lead acid batteries, keeping them clean, keep, keeping your connections tight, say for your gel or AGM batteries, three to 500. After that, you're gonna see a really sharp drop off. They're not gonna perform. They're not gonna be able to run the same things that they did before in the same duration. In other words, what do I mean by that? Well. Battery, I just charged it up. I didn't turn on my fan for 15 minutes and now the battery is dead. Well, that's a telltale sign. It's not holding its charge anymore. That's typically what we call it. It's not holding its charge. Starts off high, use it for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. Never what it was before, right? Where it can go all night long. No longer can go all night long. Only five or 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. As it's time to go ahead and replace that battery, okay? So those are the concepts when it's time to replace a lead acid gel or AGM batteries. Now, the one thing I do want to talk about is if you are changing those out, this may be the time to consider going ahead and switching over to lithium. Now, I've done some videos before. You can check them in the comments here on what, what are the considerations I need to switch over to lithium. When we look at lithium, almost everything is going to be a little bit different. One, the lifespan on these, the cycle life on these, are roughly about 10 times. We're over here with the lead acid gel AGM batteries, anywhere between 300 and 600 cycles. When you convert over to lithium, you're looking anywhere between 6,000 and 10,000 cycles. Okay, so you get about a 10 to one ratio. In other words, that battery can cycle about 10 times as much as it can with a lead acid gel or AGM battery. So it's a 10 to one ratio that you have there. Now, a lithium battery doesn't have that precipitous voltage drop, okay? Whenever we discharge those batteries, it pretty much maintains that voltage. Now, a telltale sign that the battery is acting up is if you do see a voltage drop, even with a lithium battery, chances are it's not gonna happen if it's well built, okay? One more thing about the concept of maybe switching over between lithium or from lead acid gel and AGM over to lithium. These lead acid gel and AGM batteries, they're called deep cycle batteries, and we know that deep cycle means that they can run small appliances, small demands for a good duration of time. What I call jogger batteries. Run that fart fan, okay. Lithium, if you wanted to run the air conditioner with a proper inverter, I'm gonna make that battery sprint. In other words, I'm gonna pull far more power out of it far quicker than I could with a lead acid gel or AGM batteries. Think of this over here in cooking, it's a crock pot. It takes hours to charge and takes hours to discharge, to treat that battery right. The lithium batteries, this is kind of like your Instapot, okay? It can do the same thing in far shorter amount of time. What does that mean? That means I can draw more power quicker uh, to run larger appliances. With the proper equipment, say an inverter, I can run that a heck of a lot faster. It's built that way. 
okay? If I try and pull more power out of the uh, lithium, I'm sorry, lead acid gel AGM batteries, there's an effect. It can't run that far. It can't do that. So we call it the Puchard effect, okay? And what that means is your depth of charge, your depth of discharge drops precipitously or the total amount of power that you can pull out of that battery, if you're trying to draw it out fast, drops. What do I mean? Well, if you have a 100 amp hour battery and you're trying to draw a lot of that at once, when you draw a lot of that at once, you're not going to have 100 amp hours worth of usage. Inside, there's some resistance that takes place. We call it internal resistance. And it takes more power to get past that resistance. So a lot of that battery potential power gets used up in the battery just to try and push out the amperage that you're looking for in order to run the large appliances. The way to fix that is to go with a lithium battery, has far less internal resistance inside, and allows for a quicker charge and a quicker discharge. Lastly, when you are deciding to look at, you know, maybe switching over to lithium, I'll tell you one of the biggest factors to look for is what we call active balancing. Now, a lithium battery, I want you to think, inside I've got four battery cells inside a lithium 12-volt battery. And those cells can get out of balance. One thing of note is, as we're finding out, when we deep discharge these things over and over and over, those cells can get out of balance. And most providers, they'll put in a BMS that has what we call passive balancing. That means whenever the battery is uh, fully charged, there's a small amount of voltage that will pass back and forth to charge those up. Well, that means to you is that you can't use your batteries if you want to keep those balanced. You can't use them day in and day out. That's more for the individual that's going to be once every couple months, they may go off grid and use their batteries if you want to keep those balanced. Active balancing is for the RVer who you don't know when you're going to use that battery, so you want to make sure it's balanced all the time. Active balancing allows the balancing to take place even during the charge. Okay, even during the charge and the discharge, they're just always balancing, right? So in your consideration, when you're looking at lithium batteries, you want to have a battery provider, kind of like Big Beard Batteries, that gives you both active and passive balancing. So that way it doesn't matter what you do as an RVer. You want to use your batteries, boom, they can take care of it. If you want to let it sit for a couple months or whatnot, be plugged into shore power, not a problem. They stay balanced. When you put in an active balance, such as what we do with the Big Beard batteries, they're going to last longer and you get a deeper discharge. So there's your tech tip. A pizza pie. <laughs> You know what nobody ever talks about? When should you? What buttons you hitting? By the way, <laughs> hey, and you can um, rest. <laughs>